what is up everybody and welcome back to the channel so uh today i wanted to actually cover a topic which originally i was going to include in uh my q a or rather the frequently asked questions video which i released a couple of videos back and um when i then started actually answering it i realized i was talking for something like seven eight nine minutes explaining it because it was quite a uh, you know a broad topic and that's why i decided to just do a video on that all on its own so we can unpack everything have it all together condensed into one video and that topic is as the name of the video suggests attributes and exactly how they work so this covers all attributes it means attributes on weapons attributes on gear as well so the first thing we can look at is just a small representation that i made here to say that you know essentially the game is driven by four primary attributes if we can call them that way right uh we've got firepower armor max health and anomaly power and what i try to indicate here is essentially where you would get additions or bonuses to those uh those four attributes so in the case of firepower you can get that boosted by weapons in, in fact the majority of your firepower will come from weapons um you can get it from gear of course your armor that you wear and uh and in, in in just by the way the reason why i call it gear here is because i didn't want it to be confused with armor as in armor value so please understand that gear here literally refers to it refers to the five armor pieces that you can equip and then you can also get firepower from nodes in your character's skill tree. So sometimes something will give you a flat percentage increase or an increase depending on if you do something or, you know, so on and so forth. For armor, uh, th this you primarily get from your gear and you can also get it from the skill tree. Max health, you get every time your character levels up from level 1 to 30, you get a certain amount of max health added. So that happens automatically and that's part of the whole leveling up process. But you can also get this from gear from armor and lastly you can also again get increases from specific nodes within the skill tree and this is true for all characters last one is anomaly power and this is of course the power of our spells and our abilities and, and things like that this also has a static increase that happens every time from level 1 to 30 so you're always getting a little bit of additional anomaly power as you level up through the game until you get to 30 but you also get this from gear and you can also get it once again from nodes in the skill tree so this was just basically to be an indication of where you will be funneling these um stats from to bold the overall you know you know character that you'll end up having now when we're talking about attributes and let me put this table up here so when we're talking about attributes there's a little bit more that we can cover here and uh, first of all, what I wanted to indicate with this was just exactly the attributes name. And then the second column is where you can find this attribute. So is it on armor? Is it on weapons? Or can it appear on both? And then lastly, what you have in the third column is the maximum values for these. And of course, you can upgrade attributes by going to Dr. Zaheri and using shards to upgrade those to their maximum values uh the shards of course you get from disassembling gear as you play the game so just as you're getting titanium and iron and and leather by disassembling gear you also do get shards as well and this is visible whenever you dis disassemble something you'll notice this you know the amount of shards that you get in actual fact you can also see which uh which uh, let me say shard type you're gonna get when you disassemble something by looking at the item and seeing next to which sub attribute the little symbol is it looks like a it's difficult to say what it really looks like it looks like a little bug i guess you could say so um that the point here the very first point the very important point that i want to make before we dive into the detail behind these attributes is that um attributes can roll at different levels on gear when they drop but by using shards you can always increase them to the maximum level the maximum value that they can be so that means that that doesn't matter if you pick up a piece of gear that only rolls with for instance 2000 bonus firepower by spending some shards you can get it up to the maximum of 8038 firepower and of course all of these values are for when the gear is level 50. so this gets scaled down so for instance a level 10 piece of gear is never going to be able to have bonus firepower of 8038 of course this is also scaled behind the leveling uh and this is obviously just to 
probably keep you from you know taking gear passing it on to another character you know uh, or, or for that matter you know just spending shards and making overpowered piece of pieces of armor because 8000 additional firepower at level 10 is huge so uh, so this is obviously just another way to keep the scaling right and so that you don't overpower con uh, content you know within the game now let's spend some time going through each one of these different ones some of them are very self-explanatory as in you know what they actually do but some not so much and i have seen some questions in the comments of my videos asking you know hey what does status power you know really do why should i stack it why is it an important thing to stack um so let's spend some time let's look at the different ones and and let's just go over them so starting right at the top max health this is a super duper easy one this is just a flat amount that gets added to your health pool um max health is one of those primary attributes that can essentially roll on you know your pieces of armor and there's been some speculation as to if you could for instance build a deck uh build a deck wow i'm thinking about card games here if you could build a a character that stacked max health but i have to say that in the current state that the game is in health is such a uh useless stat actually to be honest because no matter what's hitting you whether it's a small perforo or you know uh, uh, a character hitting you with the butt of a gun or anything like that um things are dealing massive amounts of damage uh unless you have mitigation of course and so uh an extra if you stack this on five pieces of gear you know an extra four thousand hp is probably not going to be as helpful as for instance an extra you know forty five thousand or fifty thousand of firepower for instance or anomaly for that matter so in any case that's max health the next two bonus firepower and anomaly power is very easy to understand that's just the flat amount that gets added to those two stats of course those two stats are important depending on the kind of character that you want to build or if you have a hybrid that is working with really decent spell damage or anomaly damage rather and decent firepower damage but nonetheless these are your true primary ways of dealing damage you're either doing it through abilities and through you know uh, let's call it magic or spell power or whatever you want to say uh, or you're shooting stuff so you're using firepower and you're using your gun um the fourth one that we have there is armor pierce now armor pierce is a stat that appears on weapons and it's exactly as the name suggests um enemies can have an armor uh, can have an armor value as well they can have armor and the idea here would be that your armor pierce value is how much of that um damage reduction that the enemy has you circumvent now the exact maths with this is really difficult to test i've tried uh especially once again now where things are a little bit weird and values you know kind of seem off but the idea here theoretically is that if you are able to for instance stack your armor piers higher than than what uh, the armor reduction or damage reduction of a minion that you're shooting is then essentially you negate all that armor that's 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 what it's supposed to do but that's basically that stat then then the fifth one that we have there is weapon life leech now weapon life leech is basically um let me just find my notes here so specifically you obviously get this on your weapons and your weapon has a certain firepower stat and obviously whatever other mods you have in your skill tree or anything like that that gets added onto that so that the damage that your weapon does that damage your weapon life leech returns the percentage that your weapon life leech is on as life to your character so this this is the only place where it gets where, where it applies that from is actual damage by that weapon so it's not gonna actually give you life by you know you shooting something but then throwing something with a fireball or uh, putting toxic on something or putting a bleed on something or so on none of those things is actually going to be influenced by this percentage to give you additional life this is purely damage dealt by the weapon that this is on um then the last one out of the primary attributes and i'm going to explain just now why we have primary attributes and secondary attributes and you'll notice there's two numbers there as well um the last one the sixth one out of primary attributes is crit damage i think again this is also a very uh, self-explanatory one uh mobs enemies that you shoot they have crit spots on them whether it's a head or a chest plate or you know whatever anything like that and when you hit those spots 
it does crit damage and whatever you have additionally stacked on this is going to be additional damage on top of that this is a very powerful stat to stack especially combined with things like crit stack and embalmer's rage and things like that because it can really scale up quite quite uh you know heavily and you can actually do immense damage by just hitting the critical spots of monsters um and not just monsters of course uh you know uh human human enemies as well um the only thing that i generally that that's is is that it's a little bit inconsistent sometimes with hitting these these crit spots but you know nonetheless it's not a bad stat to stack at all in fact for certain builds it really elevates you from let's say just a a, a really strong build to something ungodly that's got an insane clear time for instance okay so that's then all what is considered primary attributes then if we move over to secondary attributes we have cooldown down reduction which is also you know a generally a very easily understood one any build that is focused on anomaly and i'm not saying that firepower builds don't benefit from this but definitely anomaly builds or skill based builds you know i'm looking at devastators i'm looking at pyromancer um cooldown reduction is a really powerful trickster as well of course is a really powerful stat because you can drastically if you have this on four or five of your armor pieces then you can drastically lower the cooldowns of your skills and obviously get them out a lot quicker and uh, if you're anomaly based then your skills is where the majority of your damage is coming from so of course this is actually somehow a stat that exponentially increases your damage as well so yeah the second and the third one close range damage and long range damage is again fairly easy to understand uh just a little explanation about that the game considers close range, da range damage to be anything 10 meters and closer to you and then the game considers long range damage to be 18 meters and further out so what that means is that you have this no man's land between 10 meters and 18 meters that none of these two actually give you any damage onto and you'll notice that when you for instance fight something and it's running at you and if you stack a lot of long range damage you're going to be seeing that you're doing a whole shitload of damage and as soon as it gets closer than 18 meters you're going to see your damage drop off and then maybe if you have a lot of uh, also a lot of close range damage which is quite normal for a technomancer for instance where you have where you try to stack both and firepower if you're playing a bullet bolt then you'll notice as soon as something gets within 10 meters again you're again doing a lot of damage and that's that no man's land that's that's there now the technomancer for instance has uh two talents i think it's called nitrogen capsules it's in the plague tree which is the top tree which actually allows you to lower the distance to something being considered long range and both of those two nodes give you a three meter lowering so you can actually lower the 18 meters all the way down to 12 which means that your close range and long range no man's land is only two meters and so you deal all your close range damage to 10 then you have a two meter gap there where it's not not getting anything from either stat and then from 12 out you're still doing long range damage so this is uh, really makes those two talents or rather say skill nodes or whatever really important to pick up especially if you're playing a bullet build um and if you're planning on you know engaging stuff from far away and you've got like a high firepower gun or something like that um the fourth one status power this is an interesting one and i don't know if it's still the case now but there was a lot of confusion early on on you know exactly how status power works and and basically what it does but in essence status power works two different ways depending on what we're looking at so the first way is if you're looking at status effects like toxic bleed and burn which your skills can cause what status does is it, it increases the effectiveness of them by increasing their damage so if your normal and i'm just throwing out numbers here if your normal toxic tick does 100 per tick if you have status power as a percentage increase on that it is going to increase that amount and make it more potent so it's going to deal more damage per tick um, as i said this is true for toxic bleed and burn but then remember that we also have other status effects we have freeze we have vulnerable we have ash and we have weakness now these ones are actually status effects that don't really do any damage themselves but they produce some kind of effect and what status power does with these ones is it increases their effectiveness in terms of their length that they stayed applied so 
uh, let's use freeze in, as an example. If you have a lot of status stack, your freezes on characters will last a lot longer. On enemies will last a lot longer. So that's just the difference between the two. But as you can see, uh, status power is a very versatile attribute and actually quite useful. So uh, that's basically how that works. The second last one, so the first one that we have is healing received. Now, this sounds very general and, and very you know generic, but basically uh, it, this increases the amount of healing that you get through direct healing. So uh, this means that leech effects and regeneration and so on are not affected by this. But direct healing can be, for instance, um, I'll give you an example. Technomancer gets health back for every amount of damage that it does, no matter what, whether you're shooting a gun or anything like that, you get a percentage of that back as health. This healing receives that, that percentage is stacked on top of that and means that you're getting more health back. So again, uh, a very powerful attribute just to get straight health back from essentially all direct damage that you heal. So the difference between this one and the diff and, and Weapon Leech, for instance, is that Weapon Leech is only the weapon, whereas this is any direct healing that you are supposedly getting. The last one is then, the let's say, the counterpart or the opposite to Weapon Life Leech, and that's Skills Life Leech. Now, something to bear in mind with this is this includes all... Uh, damage dealt by a skill, including melee. So skills life leech will also activate if you, you know, run in melee something or just use a standing melee because that is actually applying anomaly damage as well because each one of the four characters have different statuses that they apply with, with this, like for instance, freeze coming from a technomancer. So skills life leech will also proc on that and dot effects. So toxic and burn, for instance, and bleed, will actually give you life back to your character as well through skills life leech if you have this on your armor or your weapon pieces. So that's all of them there with the maximum values. Now, the reason why I have a one and a two behind primary and secondary, and I guess this is the last part of it, is that whenever a piece rolls, and this is something else that's been asked, whenever a piece rolls, what can appear together? The point is this, Every piece of armor, every weapon will always have one primary attribute and two secondary attributes. And this is the pool that it chooses it from. So you'll always have like firepower on something and then like two secondary strats, like maybe, like for instance, the, the gear, the armor that I wear on my Technomancer has bonus firepower. And then I look for pieces that have close range damage and long range on. That's one primary and two secondaries. So you'll always know the pool that you can get basically by, by looking at these different attributes. And these are the pools as they stack together as well as their maximum value. So hopefully this can help you to sort of plan out which attributes you want on your character and, you know, um, what that'll end up, you know, being uh, all in all together when you have your character at level 50. Do remember that, that these are level 50 values. So of course they are going to differ if you're looking at a level 40 and I mean gear, gear 40 level character, for instance. Um, that's it for today. I, I think it, this turned out to be a bit longer than I wanted it to be, but um, I just basically went off here. I didn't, I didn't prepare a script or anything. I just did these uh, little tables and thought that I would talk around them. Um, if you find content like this interesting, please go ahead and hit the subscribe. As I always say, this is the kind of stuff that I bring to the game or that I want to bring to the game. Um, and uh, let me know in the comments down below if this has helped you somehow. And also plans for in the next couple of days is uh, tomorrow, I think I'll bring out, uh, I'm basically ready to retire the, de the Technomancer, if I can put it that way. So it's by far the character that I've played the most, the most, the most. <laughs> And it's uh, it's basically, uh, it's complete as I have it right now. I've gotten all the drops that I've wanted. I've gotten all the sets that I've wanted. I've tested everything that I wanted. And I'm pretty happy with the character as I have it right now. I'm able to comfortably do CT15s, even with all this mitigation, blah, blah, drama. Um, and so I'm ready to move over to a new character. Uh, I'm still deciding what that's going to be. Um, and yeah that that's always was going to be the approach that i had to this game is i i wanted to take one character and basically play it i would say all the way through if i can put it that way and then i would move over to something else um and then over the weekend i have a super sexy announcement coming for the channel so obviously keep uh, your eyes peeled for that and uh that's basically it for today so thank you very much for joining especially if you've stayed this long 
I want you to have a great morning, a great afternoon, and a great evening wherever you are. And until next video, fucking cheers. Thank you.